So, Rick Stop, why did you start Tyler So? Uh, when my son Tyler was diagnosed, uh, we didn't know what dystonia was. Uh, and obviously, just like probably anybody in that situation, we were up all night looking on the internet and trying to figure out what was going on. And what we found was that uh, uh, just like us, there was very little known, very little research, very little relative to other things, uh, money that went towards this. And we knew uh, that we had the ability, we could raise some money uh, and have, a, have an impact on, on dystonia. But then as we looked, we also saw that a lot of the money went to uh, Parkinson's research and dystonia kind of got the trickle down effect you know the DBS and things that are very effective all came from Parkinson's but we thought if we could put all of our money into directly into dystonia that we could uh, move the cure that much faster uh, to the finish line so um, you know we see we don't put any money into support groups, anything other than 100% of our dollars goes into research to find the cure, and we will find that cure hopefully soon. So is dystonia curable? Uh, I, that is a great question because I, I say this all the time. Um, unlike other diseases and disorders, probably 99.9% .9 of them, um, uh, most things aren't curable in the sense of a cure. They're preventable or stoppable. Uh, and the difference is dystonia is not degenerative. So you don't, uh, uh, nothing's degenerating, nothing's dying, nothing's uh, that we know of. So uh, when, when we cure dystonia, they go back to normal life. You know, they, they, uh, there's nothing that has to be rebuilt or re-engineered in order for them, they haven't lost anything. Most other disease and disorders, if you find a, a cure, it's really a prevention or a stop of the progress. My mother has Alzheimer's. If we found a cure for Alzheimer's tomorrow, it would not cure my mother. Uh, we find a cure for, when we find a cure for dystonia, Tyler and Samantha will be cured. How can we get to the cure faster? Uh, it's really simple. The things that we have in place right now, uh, it's, I'm probably oversimplifying it, but uh, uh, with the summit and, and things like that, the research that's being done and the focus on dystonia versus anything else, this has a finish line. So, uh, so it's a matter of time and money. And the more money we have, the less time it takes. So uh, be a part of, you know, the, Again, the, the big thing, differentiators, this has a finish line. We should knock this domino out first uh, and fund a cure for dystonia and then have a big party and celebrate. And what will you do when we find the cure? Um, I tell you, I, I got this from my brother, Ken, um, who said that uh, he's got $357 or whatever in an account because uh, he's going to be arrested for streaking naked down the street. Uh, uh, and so that's his bail money. Uh, so I probably do something like that, but, but in all honesty, my, uh, my life would change. My, uh, it, you know, my, anything that I could ever dream of would, uh, would come true. So, uh, you know, who knows what I could do. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what can I do to help? Uh, give money. Raise awareness. Awareness is a huge part of this. Uh, we just this past year created September Awareness uh, uh, that got a lot of momentum. We got states behind it reading proclamations, things like that. The awareness does many things, but one of the things is uh, uh, it, it involves doctors. A lot of doctors don't even know what dystonia is. Uh, we, you know, uh, so the more people that know about it, the better the diagnosis and the more research that goes into it. Because rarely do I find someone that finds out about dystonia or about the kids that are affected or, or anything with it that don't get involved and engaged in someone, whether it's doctors, researchers, or just people that want to help. <laughs>